Hey guys, welcome to my new channel. I'm Franz and I'm a visual effects supervisor for the last 20 years. And I wanted to start this channel because in my mind, a lot of visual effects channels are focusing on the technical side of things. And I really want to break down um, the, the creative thinking um, behind the shots and how to bring your shots to the next level. I have experienced quite a lot of junior or mid-level artists who never really stepped up um, the ranks to a senior artist because they were so much focusing their time and energy on the technical side, um, which is a good thing to do for sure, but this can be learned by quite anybody. Um, in my mind, um, to really get shots out of the door, it's really necessary to train your eye and um, become very familiar with um, what a director, what a client wants to see um, and how to approach a shot in a way that the budget is met. Maybe you even make a profit as a company or as an artist um, and that you're not really making huge amounts of overtime. My episodes are going to um, last for around 15 to 20 minutes. If you want to dive any deeper and if you have ideas or interests in any kind of other things of the visual effects industry, then reach out to me. Don't hesitate um, to write me a line if you have ideas about new chapters, about techniques that you have ever wanted to try. Just give me a shout and we can um, for sure um, have a look together. I'm definitely not focusing on tools because for me tools are on the one hand important um, uh, to, to know but you definitely have to do the work on your own as probably all of our veteran guys have done because you know back in the days 25 years ago when I started there was no YouTube there was no tutorials at all um, we literally had to find out on ourselves and um, sometimes we could read a book but um, um, you know but those books were outdated um, already when they came out usually so one thing never changed and that's especially that you know the creative side of things is never really talked about that much it's always everything goes into the technology so let's jump into a shot that i want to break down for you and yeah let's see how you like it in this shot what you can see is not much and it's not much of a visual effects um, heavy shot but yeah some things did happen and some things um, are actually executed I think pretty well so that you don't really recognize what was going on. So let's break that shot down here and um, the easiest thing or the easiest way to do that is um, to begin with the plate. So as you can see um, this shot has been basically a screen replacement shot and um, when we take a look at the um, at the plate, what you can see is that there are a lot of tracking markers, and we were supposed to actually take out um, the tracking markers, replace the screen, and in some shots we had to add in um, a graphic element. Um, in this shot, for the final one, that was the one that you have seen before. Um, we only took out the tracking markers. Before I start a shot, what I am, what I tend to do is actually, I tend to um, scrub through a couple of times and try to find um, the spots where it's really hard and where where it might become a little bit more uh, difficult. So um, what we can see is at the beginning. Um, or the elements that we probably will need. The first thing that we definitely will need is Rota um, because she's um, covering up um, some of the, the elements here, some of the tracking markers. The second thing is that we definitely would need tracking and the tracking might become a little bit tricky because 
um, first of all, she is covering the stuff. And second of all, there is um, a kind of a reflection um, over the screen. So any kind of um, planar track attempt might get distracted by the amount of reflection that is on top of the screen. So what I did uh, basically was I stabilized out the, um, uh, the screen. And how did I do that? The, the first approach was to do a camera track and um, to reproject um, or to do basically a 3D stabilization. So you basically reproject um, the material here um, onto a shape. So what I'm doing is I am projecting the plate with a sta still standing camera and I film that with the moving camera. So what happens is the whole motion gets stabilized out. There is a little bit of motion since um, the track is not perfect, but for that I did a 2D um, planar track. What I always state when I'm talking to juniors or mid-level artists is don't try to, to overcomplicate things. Have a look in context. Even if when I'm scrubbing through this stabilization, it still looks a little bit wobbly here. But if you are really looking closely, it's not that bad um, overall and it's probably enough to get this shot solved and that's what i'm aiming for i'm not aiming for like the track needs to be pixel perfect i'm trying to aim for what makes this shot really um, doable in a reasonable amount of time so what i did was actually i painted um, i painted out some parts here um, where she was um, covering uh, the screen. So those parts I painted. For the rest, I just rotate, add a roto note here, um, and blurt that roto, and pre-comped um, the, uh, the screen, which is fairly easy. Then I did a little bit of time warp um, because as you can see, I offset it basically the whole shot um, a little bit for around uh, 20 frames because um, the timing was a little bit off when I re-applied um, this kind of texture over um, the plate. And yeah, and there you go. We scaled up, we scaled up the, um, the cleaned texture a little bit and um, put that back on top and the rest is like okay um, a little bit of integration work afterwards especially adding back um, some grain and for the eye what i did was actually tracking um, the point oops um, the front is off here so i was actually tracking the point here um, <clears throat> and um, i actually added a real um, lens flare light source where this point is to give me um, a nice looking um, element here. Added a little bit of glow and, and blinking to it. And then I comped that back on top. The shot is done within a couple of minutes. And the only important thing is um, to get a nice clean reflection by stabilizing the footage, painting where necessary not overdoing it um, and then um, comping that stuff over and if if the client wouldn't want um, the face on I have already prepped that so if the face needs to be on then um, it's just swapping out or or activating um, one of those elements and as you can see it's integrated quite well also with the new face, um, reflection is going back on top. Everything is nice and shiny and nobody would ever notice that um, there is um, some compositing going on in a shot like this. To do a little bit of QC on those things, what you should take a look at is 
basically all the channels did I integrate everything nicely so um, switch through the channels have a look there um, have a look at your edges are the edges nice and good and then have a look at the grain did you match the grain um, precisely this is fairly easy uh, nowadays with tools like um, uh, dust grain in nuke or um, we have the same thing in silhouette for example nowadays um, for the flame artist especially um, interesting um, yeah so that's that's an easy shot and I wanted to start with a fairly easy one because um, those tasks are the ones that um, should run smoothly and those tasks will definitely help you stepping up in your career if you are fast and if if you don't overcomplicate things you will come to a good result fairly quickly and that's what impresses a supervisor or a studio um, in a way that you will definitely um, get awarded new shots, better shots, more tricky shots, if you are really good in these basic uh, shots. All right, guys, um, thank you for watching this short video. I hope that you like the way I'm presenting the stuff. Um, if you have any suggestions, um, wishes and stuff like that, don't hesitate um, to comment or to um, reach out and um, I really hope to see you guys soon. Bye.